you turn that clock off? I can take it. <laughs> I take the batteries out. Yeah, is it kicking? Yeah. Yeah. It's funny, isn't it, when you hear yeah. when you suddenly. Yeah. I've done filming outside before and I've, and I've had to wait 10 minutes for a plane that's mm. thousands of miles over yeah. here to cross. Well, I think I'm going to do separate introductions. Okay. So, name and what you do with this rock cessation, and then I'll cut, and then we'll do the same for you, and then we'll yeah. just go into the, the spiel. And how do you want to film that, by the way? Um, just how, do you want to ask questions? Do you want me to ask questions, yeah. and then is it best for Caroline and Slajana to talk to me? Yeah. 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 Great. yeah. Um, so, first we're things... think we'll talk to you, we'll chat to yeah. ourselves, and yeah. it feels quite natural. Yeah. Theory, because it's yeah. a natural setting. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look at Stu. Yeah. No. The first things first, then your name and what you do for the organisation, and then I'll cut. Okay. Um, I'm Dr. Siljana Ivanis, and I'm a stroke clinical psychologist working with stroke patients in the community for Salford Royal Foundation Trust. Okay. And yourself? Uh, my name's Caroline Kinney, Dr. Caroline Kinney, and I work as a stroke clinical psychologist in Salford, working for Salford Royal Foundation Trust. Brilliant, okay. Should I have looked in the camera when I introduced myself? Uh, it, 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 I, don't, I don't think it matters too much. Okay. Okay, so when you guys are ready, you can ask the questions. Okay, so um, first of all, can you just tell us a bit about how your team works with the Stroke Association Information Advice and Support Service? <laughs> well, in Salford, we've developed the step care model for psychological care following stroke, which follows on from national guidelines. And the the stroke coordinators are a very significant part of that model at level one. We liaise very closely with them in terms of the referrals we get from them and from other services, and also in terms of referrals they make to us. And we have ongoing consultation meetings with them and telephone consultations about clients they see currently, how they're supporting them from a psychological level at step one and if and when they need to be put on our waiting list and seen by us at levels two and three. Um, the stroke coordinators also work quite closely with the um, community neurological rehabilitation team as do we and together we try and help people um, cope with the consequences of stroke both from it, from our perspective, from a psychological level, which influences the physical um, parts of rehabilitation. We often find that if people's psychological and mental health needs have been missed, um, their rehabilitation will take longer. There's also um, research that suggests that they'll have more physical health problems in the future, and it can even affect their morbidity if psychological problems are missed. The stroke coordinators are very good at picking up on those problems early on. We feel that they're often in a unique position to do that because they're the only service providers in Salford that know the stroke survivors from hospital when they've had the stroke and follow them right through the first year. I think that um, certainly in our day-to-day -day work we work really closely um, with the coordinators at the Stroke Association and they support us a lot with our step care model of care um, and in particular um, thinking about those clients who unfortunately may be missed if they weren't around to support people. They often um, meet people at a time sometimes where they've left the hospital um, and then um, they're in the community, they're getting on with their lives and they get stuck and at that point unfortunately for a lot <coughs> of people they're no longer in contact with the health care professionals, they're no longer um, have involvement for the from the rehabilitation teams and yet the psychological problems can be quite significant um, and I'm just thinking about a case that was referred from the Stroke Association recently where there was a young um, single mother with two children who on leaving hospital seemed and appeared to be doing quite well and rehabilitation wise um, had had limited input from services and was getting on with her life um, but unfortunately, at the time when the Stroke Association came to see her at six months, um, she was in a very difficult place with her anxiety and her depression. But in addition to that, her family were really struggling. Her two young children were highly anxious. That was impacting on their day-to-day -day lives at school and in other areas. Um, and they were able to not only flag 
her up to our service where she'd been missed, but also encourage her to access other services that made a massive difference to her, her not only her physical health, but also her mental health and wellbeing. Um, and some of the practical help around supporting um, her in respect of um, her financial situation, um, future training, college courses, and um, that can be of great, that was a great assistance. Um, and for this woman, she'd already had an admission actually to A&E because she was misattributing um, her anxiety symptoms for symptoms of a stroke, which again is not unusual for people to do. Um, and it just highlighted how actually, in terms of resources, getting in there and identifying this woman could make a massive difference both to um, the healthcare system but also in terms of social care, in terms of the care she was receiving all round. Um, unfortunately, in this case, working alongside them at, with our step care model, um, we worked alongside them together and it made a massive difference to this person, but also in, in respect of her children and her role, not as an individual but as a mother, it made a massive difference. Great, thank you. That's a really good example. Um, <coughs> can you, I suppose one of the questions we, we, we want to understand is what do you think the difference would be or what would the impact be if the Stroke Association service wasn't available in Salford for, for stroke survivors and families? I guess from our perspective there's quite um, a number of implications. I mean there's implications for our services, the psychology service, because it would impact straight away on our waiting lists um, in that. And we do, in terms of the step care, the whole point of the model is to maximise the resources and the efficiency of those resources. Um, and we're, as psychologists, we're at step three of the model. And at step one and two, um, we support the Stroke Association and other colleagues to support clients at that level. So that our resources then are targeted appropriately at those most in need. Um, and they often, I guess, serve to um, actually reduce us having to have an intervention at all, or they can hold people for us whilst they're on the waiting list and offer them a level of support that prevents problems deteriorating mm. before we actually see them. So that's, that's one aspect mm. of what they do. So put in simple terms, they can nip problems yeah. from a psychological perspective in the bud early on before they need to be seen by us, which... I think would be a huge impact. Oh, I've lost the plot, haven't mm. I? So um, <laughs> no, but I guess you're right. I guess what they do is they they nip things the, in the bud in in one yeah. respect, mm -hmm. but also they can actually highlight um, mm. really quite difficult, complex cases in the community yes. that would be missed. I think that's a key factor for their six month reviews. Yeah. Um, we often get referrals from the stroke association coordinators at that point which would, would have been missed otherwise because quite often if people have needed physical health support from the community neurorehabilitation team they'll have done their piece of work and um, and stepped back from seeing them at that point so the stroke association coordinators will be the only people they're in contact with and thus possibly the only people that are likely to pick up their psychological needs at that point and refer yeah. and consult with us at that point. And I think in terms of psychological needs, they what they're very good at is addressing not only the psychological needs of the individuals who's had the stroke, but of the partners, the carers and their families. Mm -hmm. And certainly there's a lot of research out there now that's highlighting the impact on the whole family system after a stroke is, is massive and it's very mm -hmm. complex. And they're able to not only identify that, but provide us with information that helps us then to tease out the complexity yeah. of the family system and offer much more efficiently and effectively in mm -hmm. intervention and um, with their support. Yeah. And that was the, the point I was making earlier about them being in a unique position to do that because they often know the people fr right from hospital right through that first year. So yeah. they have a very rich vein of information that they can provide for people like us which, which saves us time and resources in terms mm. of being able to target what the issues are when we need to go out and see the people and again nip things in the bud before yeah. they get so extreme that it becomes very difficult for them mm. to be helped and impacts on their physical health at that point and hence services. Yeah. So in many ways they're kind of helping economically as well in terms of services. The earlier that we, we see somebody, the, the, the more likely we are able to help before it escalates to them needing yeah. so, more social care and more um, um, physical health care. Mm. And certainly the feedback, we work very closely with um, our community neuro neurological rehabilitation team and um, 
we work closely now through the MDT. We have regular meetings with the Stroke Association workers there as well as ourselves and other professionals. And it's it's been amazing really how the, the way they're communicating the information they can provide that not only ourselves but also the community teams draw on them for information, draw on them for support. Um, and some of the things that get in the way of physiotherapy and occupational mm -hmm. therapy, they can be more the practical day-to-day -day stuff around caring, around financial problems, around accessing different um, third sector services. And um, the team feedback we're getting from the from the multidisciplinary team is that, you know, often they do get stuck with clients, they get stuck in rehabilitation. It's these sorts of factors that can really help um, unstick families who are who are stuck and unstick that individual to help them move forwards in the rehab so that they don't require the rehabilitation mm -hmm. then for as long and that they don't require many, many of the care services because physically they are getting mm -hmm. stronger and moving forwards. So if the coordinators weren't there, there's a potential that people would be in rehab for longer because our service and say the community new rehabilitation team wouldn't be able to um, ask them to help with issues such as financial support and and carer support around that that would ease some of the strain from the person mm. and the families themselves and then make them able to focus more on the rehabilitation mm -hmm. and get better quicker. I think that's the unique thing with stroke. It impacts on so many aspects of an individual's life the partner's lives, the carer's lives, the family's lives. The children's it's lives. Everything mm. is so complex. So to have a service there that can support us around that complexity is just uh, is invaluable because it frees us up to do the work we need to do and it frees up the other rehabilitation teams, the physios and OTs, mm -hmm. to do their work um, so that that really messy stuff and the support that those families desperately need and are crying out for can be provided alongside these other interventions mm -hmm. which then benefit all our services, I think, um, in terms of our efficiencies, our waiting mm. lists, financially, in all, in all sorts of ways, yeah. it, it really supports us. Brilliant, thank you. Um, I suppose then, just <coughs> one final thing, um, and you've covered a lot of it anyway, but we'll just kind of, mm. sometimes we just recap to, to get it again. Um, if, if you could say then, just what, what do you think the major difference is that the Stroke Association information advice and support service um, can, has made for, you know, for some of the clients that you see? They've gone out to see them soon after their discharge, which is a very difficult time for patients following stroke. It can be very overwhelming. Um, they've provided them with key bits of information about what to expect after stroke, and they've also, they also identify what they need in terms of financial support, physical support and um, psychological support um, and that's key both soon after their discharge and certainly at the six month review stage when lots of people would be missed. Yeah I think it's you know the feedback from families um, when we go to see families is, is always very positive and it almost feels like they've got somebody alongside them mm. at that time when they can be feeling very abandoned in the community which a lot of clients do mm. tell us that and it's as if they've got someone alongside them that they know is there and if things get difficult yeah. they can contact them yeah. and they've got the confidence that that person will be there to support them and they will be there to signpost the other services that are appropriate and often when we go into a service you know I'm thinking of one of my clients mm -hmm. recently who just was saying they couldn't sing or talk more highly about the stroke association worker um, and also in terms of look at look how the quickly they got you involved as well and it was a really severe mm. case in terms of mental health but they felt confident in that support and confident that someone will be there at the end of the phone and they will be there to see them if they're needed or if yeah. they can't provide that support then they know somebody who will yeah. and it's that um, confidence and they'll often take them to those services yeah. like they'll help them make an appointment with the CAB and if they have problems with um, finances or transport they'll take the time to take them to make sure they get to those places because there can be lots of barriers for why people can't yeah. help themselves and it's just having that one person from mm -hmm. the Stroke Association to help them get to those um, appointments and meetings can make mm -hmm. a huge amount of difference and certainly reduce their level of stress and worry 
that yeah. would then impact on their mental health and consequently their physical health. So all that is being helped at a very early stage yeah. in the process. I think it's, it's almost like having that relationship. Mm -hmm. they, they tend to build a relationship that's very meaningful for people after stroke. And unfortunately, other services, they may have an appointment at the hospital for 10 minutes, there may be an appointment at the GPs, they may be followed up at the GP, but they're not able, people tell us they're not able to share what they need to share mm -hmm. and what the, the workers are able to do is be there for people so that they can share their problems in an open and honest mm -hmm. way so that these problems can be addressed early on, that they can be mm -hmm. nipped in the bud early on. Um, and if they weren't there, I guess my fear is what would happen to those problems and well, those a lot people. Of those problems wouldn't be heard and therefore not acted yeah. upon and um, and then they just spiral into very difficult situations that would be hard to... Yeah. Um, and I think that that is it. It's not unusual for, for us to hear about people who, you know, may end up, you know, deteriorating significantly, mm. may end up back in A&E or back in hospital. Um, and when you do stop and explore what's going on for those people, it's often because they feel totally on their own, totally isolated. Mm. They totally feel they've been overwhelmed. abandoned, overwhelmed with everything. Their families are overwhelmed. People try to support each other within a family, often inadvertently, in offering support or not offering support. You know, the problems can deteriorate. They've got nobody there to to share that with. And, you know, out there, you know, it's not unusual. Now, more and more, we're hearing more stories from people who who were sharing that, feeling mm. totally on their own. And unfortunately, we're very, I think we're very fortunate in Salford to have mm. the service. So. And I think, you know, our clients would... would support some confident in saying that they'd be there to say exactly the same that we're very lucky to have mm. somebody there for us from day one right through yeah. that through really difficult first year great hopefully you'll get something out there. oh 